Java 25 is here and it's not a normal version. We got a LTS version after 21. Now in between we got 22, 23, 24, but then we, won't, we have not talked about it much is because those are not LTS version. LTS by the way stands for long term support. And I normally focus on the LTS version. So I was using 17, then I moved to 21 and now I'm going to move on 25. Now looking at all these versions, of course they will add some features in the existing things, but also they will add some performance improvement or they will do some performance improvement. And in this version, I can see a lot of things are happening. Now in this particular video, we'll talk about what are things which came and what are things will be coming next. And also we'll run some code to show you as a learner or as a beginner in Java, what are things you are going to see which will be changing. Cool. So the first thing you have to do is you have to get the JDK 25 in your machine. You can get from multiple places, but I would prefer to get open JDK. And you can go to this URL which is dedicate.java.net slash 25 and on this page you can just based on your OS you can download one. In this machine I have already downloaded. So basically when you download this zip it will give you a folder and you have to set the path in the environment variables. And I think that's straightforward. Now once you get JDK in your machine uh, let's talk about the features. Now 25 came up with a lot of features but they're not entirely new few things started in 21 itself, but some are pre preview, some are in incubation and later on they basically make a final version of it. Uh, example, if you look at the encoding and cryptography objects, they are still in preview, but you can still use it. And there are few features which are in preview. You can't directly run it in the production application. You have to set some parameters for that. And I would recommend don't run it on the production. For learning purpose, it's good. Uh, they have removed the support for Toyota Bit and that's normal, I think. Uh, next, I'm interested in the uh, structured concurrency because of the virtual threads. When you get so many threads working, how will you make it manageable? So uh, we can do that. I've not experimented fully with this. Uh, I will try out more stuff and then I should make a video. Then there are new things coming in Switch, but again, it's into the preview, so we'll not talk about that. Uh, Vector API is here, so machine learning people talking about Python. Java is on the way for that, and once it reach to that level, it will take over for sure. Uh, then we have the compact source files and instance method, we'll, we'll see that. And a lot of things. In fact, I would also recommend you to explore this page of OpenJDK and uh, if you want to know what happened before, you can even check those things. I think when you go here for the 24th version, this is 24 and then likewise you can go, the, go to the previous versions. Uh, so we got a lot of updates in 25 from 21 because of all these small versions. We got uh, virtual threads as we defined, uh, we have talked before, then we got class file API. But I'm going to talk about things for beginners. So let's let's go back to the VS code and let's try out some code. So the first thing is one of the thing with uh, Java or people who are learning Java for the first time, they are actually scared by looking at the first code. Normally the first code we always do is hello world, right? So how do you do hello world? It's very simple. You create a class first. You, without class, this will not work. And then you create a method which is public static void mean it's good to write them but to explain this thing to a beginner it's very difficult okay to convince them that you will get used to it and then you have to say system dot out dot pentelin i think i have not installed the extensions for java i don't use vs code much for java i use intellij but then for small code i think vs code looks good so by the time it installs i will type the things by myself so i will say system dot out dot print ln and then here you say hello world and whatever you want to print. This is your first code in Java, right? And then if you want to run this, uh, you have to say Java C, compile the file, then you have to run the file by Java command. Otherwise you can directly run Java demo dot Java. Uh, I think this, this, this is something new. If I'm not wrong, it came in 17, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, but then you can see we got hello world and that perfectly works, right? Now, uh, what I want to do here is, I want to show you what new came in Java after Java 21, I think. So you don't have to, if you're learning for the first time, you don't have to write the entire code. You can do some shortcuts. So you can say void main uh, and you don't even have to 
specify public class demo so you can skip that it will create a class behind the scene for you uh, then you don't need to write public static you can directly go for void main you don't have to pass the parameters inside so you can simply say we are getting a function in which you just want to print something and since we are doing io operation so you have to say io dot print ln and then you can print hello world now before you run this you have to make sure you can see we are getting we are seeing some error here it says io cannot be resolved uh, i think vs code is not updated with the jdk version and i also want to check what version of java i'm using so is java 25 it should work let me just play it out and i will say java demo dot java and it works you can see we got hello world so this is a small code using which you can print it okay so now we got jshell in long back and for learners even jshell looks good or you can try with this way but if you are making a production ready project don't do this go for normal syntax this is just for the learners the next improvement we got is in the unnamed variables see sometimes we create variables just because we have to create the variable but then we don't use it one of the classic example is exception handling so let's say if i write here try and in this try i'm trying out something let's say i want to uh, create a integer and this will be coming from a value like this let's say one two three and you cannot assign this right so you have to basically do integer dot pass int and that's the standard way of doing this passing the value okay ignore that s this is given by a lot of people get confused this is given by the id is this not something i have typed so once you got this try in which you are trying this and maybe you don't even want to use that value or whatever you want to do that later but since we have a try we have to write catch and then we say exception e and then we print uh, some message here right but then sometimes we also use e when type the message so i can say invalid value i can say that and i can also print the message right see when you use e dot get message it makes sense to use this variable e here right but what if you don't want to do this and you just want i'm, I'm still use this e variable what if you can skip it so when i say skip it it's not like you can keep it empty but you can use underscore now so for the unused value and this was not allowed and that's why it says uh, underscore is keyword from the source level 9 onwards cannot be used as identifier okay uh, but then this works in J jdk 25 and you can see it's not printing anything because we are not storing the value or we are not printing the value i, I could have used io dot print ln but let's go for standard way and let me print num just to see something on the console uh, you can see we got one two three but if i make a mistake here of course this will raise a exception and it's it says invite value so if you don't use e then why to write e there that's what they saying uh, for me I, I i always use exception object but if you're not using it then you can use underscore uh, what next let's do quickly let's remove all this stuff the next thing which we got is for the super method see when you will create a class let's say we have a class called parent here and in this class you have a constructor which is public parent and in this you are let's say printing something you are saying in parent and let's say we got a class called child and this child extends parent and here you are saying public child and we got a constructor there so we know that the first line of the constructor for the child class or any class is super right so even if you don't mention that it is a super method uh, example let's say if you uh, try to print here which is in child and now if you try to run this okay first of all we have to create the object of child otherwise this will not work i was a child obj equal to new child i know why i'm treating child as an object but anyway so let's run this and you can see it says in parent and in child okay why in parent is because by default it calls this super method even if you don't mention that it is super method so even if i write that it will give the same output now before jdk 25 or when it was released pre-released on stuff uh, at least before 17 for sure you can't write anything before super in example if you want to print something you can't do that i can't say before super so if you do this in before jdk or whatever whenever it was released after 21 uh, this was not possible and you can see it still gives you error it says constructor call must be the first statement in the constructor 
So if you run this, it still works now. Okay, so we can do this. Now question is why someone will do that? Uh, maybe you want to check a particular value before sending to the parent class. Uh, maybe you want to raise an exception if something goes wrong. So those things you can do here. But yes, you still can't assign a value. So let's say if I have a parent value here, which is int x equal to nine, and then I can't simply come here by saying x equal to eight. Okay, so if you do this, it will give you an error. But can I do this? Can I just put that after super? It works. So you can't do assignment before the super, but you can print, you can check for the exceptions, you can do those stuff. So this is the new improvement in the super method. Uh, then we got changes in the collection. So let's go back here and let's create a collection here. Uh, so let's say we got a list here and in this list I'm going to have list of string. I will say list equal to new array list. And let's say in this I do have a list of some values. So we got A, we got B and we got C. So let's say we have these values here. And normally when you want to fetch value from the list, how you do it? So you have to provide the index number, right? So you can use index 0, index 1, index 2. Uh, and let's say if you want to fetch the first value, it's very simple. You can say list dot get and you can pass the index zero that perfectly works right it will give you the first value but if you want to get the last value you normally fetch the length of the list and then you say minus one then you will get the last value but now with the new improvement you can directly say list dot get first and list dot get last so if you run this now you can see we got the first value we got the last value we also got a inbuilt method uh, where you can reverse a particular list. So you can say reversed. So it will give you the reverse list, C, B, A. So these are the improvements which we got. Uh, we also got improvement in the stream. So normally when you work with stream API, and that's one of my favorite, whenever you work with stream, let's say if you're do if you doing filtering or if you're doing map or if you're doing any intermediate operations, so stream works on each value individually. You can't basically have a memory of the old values. Now, when this will be useful? So let's say you got a lot of values for a uh, temperature for the area. And I always check uh, temperature or the current weather every day. And if I want to know with all the values, so let's say these are the values for the temperature in my area, I want to know if the, va if the temperature increased for three consecutive days or four consecutive days. And if it happened, I want that values from where to when, where it went. So we can't simply do that with the help of uh, normal stream methods. And that's why we can use something called a stream gatherers where you can create windows and you can compare the windows. Uh, if you want to know about it, let me know in the comments. I'm very interested in making those videos, but I thought I will do that in this video, but I don't want to make a two, two hour when lengthy video, uh, which I'm anyway doing it. I think it's more than 15 minutes now or 14 minutes by cutting the parts. Okay, so these are the new things. Uh, one more, one last more, one last. So let's say if I remove everything here and let me create a new file, let's say hello.java. And in this, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method which is public void show and I'm going to print hello. Okay, nothing fancy, simple show method and hello. Now this syntax where you can run the file directly using a Java command, it's pretty new for a few people, right? So normally what you do is you write Java C, then the file name. And then once you compile it, then you use a Java command to run it with whatever the class name is. But we got this new syntax. But this was working only for one file, right? But what if what happens if you have multiple files? Example, we got two files here and demo is dependent on the hello. So let's say if I create object of hello here and if I try to say obj.show, now before this was not working. So it, it will ask you to compile the hello file separately, then you can do this. But now we don't have to do that. We can directly run Java demo and this will basically work with both the files. Okay, so these are the new changes in JDK 25 or till JDK 25 from 2021. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed and if you need video on a particular section. So if I try to create the video or an article on that. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.